Hey, what's up, guys? It's Bonnie. I'm back again for a whole new video. Um, I'm doing one of those videos where I talk about a book that I've read and kind of give like a synopsis of kind of what the book is talking about. I hope the Bunny Gang is ready for this. I know I haven't done this in a while because I kind of like did one of those things where I started reading a book and then kind of fell off. So I'm just going to get right into it. It's just shut up and do it. So, it's from Brian Tracy, just in case if you actually decide to get the book. So, pretty much, I'm going to go into it. Winning is for winners. Deep within man dwell those slumbering powers, powers that would astonish him, that he would never dream of processing focus that world, revolutionize his life, if aroused and put into action. So, pretty much the book, even though it's, like, just the introduction, the book pretty much starts out with, like, a quote. And as you continue on to, you know, the book, it pretty much gives key points. Like, even in the introduction, it says, the big question. You know, and the big question, pretty much, you have to ask yourself, how are people, like, successful? The most powerful asserts you know what made your reputation like what type of reputation did you have getting things done um you know so you have to figure out what your main goal is in life the achievement of happiness the progressive realization of a wealthy goal or ideal and pretty much what that means is once you figure out what your goal is or what your end game is with whatever you're trying to do, you'll achieve ultimate happiness. But if you don't, if you go into something and you don't know what you're trying to like get out of it as far as like doing something, you're not going to get anywhere with it, which makes complete sense. Getting started and keep going. So obviously that's pretty basic. Like once you get started with something, just keep going with it. Don't give up just because it gets hard or because the obstacles are not the easiest to get through. And then it says, let's begin. So it goes into another quote. It says, it does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. Which I feel like that quote is self-explanatory. That pretty much just means that you know it doesn't matter that you go slowly to get to your goals as long as you actually finish your goals and not say that you will the biggest obstacles to success and here's another quote we first make our habits and then our habits make us which makes a lot of sense and if you want me to explain that quote i have no problem that pretty much means that whatever habit you have that might have prevented you from reaching your goal that habit slowly becomes who you are. So you might want to look at the type of habits that you have as a person and try to figure out if you want to keep those habits around, if that makes sense. So develop new, better habits. Um, pretty much you want to stop and think um, what habits you need to change, what habits you could probably keep, and you know what have you challenge your beliefs the break on your potential fear of failure um one of the things that this book is actually known for mentioning is a lot of people the main reason why they have issues with actually excelling in life is because they're afraid to fail if you're trying to become successful and get things done, you cannot be afraid to fail. If you're afraid to fail, you're never going to get anywhere. That sounds really crazy, like, oh, why would I want to fail if I'm trying to do this, this, and this? Yes, I get where you're coming from, but it is very true. And then he gives an example of taming elephants. And pretty much, you know, just to get short and brief and to the point, he talks about how the elephant gets trained and how the elephant gets taught not to do certain things. So the elephant has developed that fear of not, you know, being assertive and doing certain things like a normal elephant would. Whereas it's the same for a human being. If you get trained 
to know the answer no to stuff. You're going to believe certain beliefs or whatever as you get older. Like, oh, when I was growing up, I was told, no, I can't do this. So you're going to believe that you might physically not be able to do stuff. The training begins. Um, pretty much that goes more into detail about the elephant where, you you know, you start to feel helpless. You know, you learn the, the feeling of helplessness. Um, then he goes, the elephant gives up, you know, the root of helplessness, um, you know, passive. And it's a, and he pretty much says it's a state of mind of 80% of the population. So what happens is when your parents say you can't or no or whatever to certain things, you become passive and you learn the value of how easy it is to give up on stuff. And you don't actually try to excel and do anything. Set goals. Your actions tell the truth, the key to success, the wonderful discovery is once you develop a new positive life enchanting habit, it soon becomes automatic and easy. Um, pretty much a self-explanatory. Once you figure out, you know, what your new habit is and how you want to go about achieving your goal, everything else falls into place. New habit pattern development. Develop one habit at a time. Make a decision that you are going to be punctual from now on create a positive affliction that is phrased as if you already have a new habit command um visualize yourself as if you have already had the habit of punctuality act as if you already have the habit that you desire pretend that you are already the person that you t intend to be create the feelings of pride happiness and self-control that you would have when you are always punctual the worst disease the failure language and failure language is I'll try I'll do my best the expressions are excuses for failure in advance um so pretty much he's saying you need to get rid of out of your vocabulary is saying I'll try or I'll do my best you're pretty much setting yourself up for failure Pretty much trying to say that, you know, you know, I'll get there when I get there. Fantasy Island. Favorite excuses. Vote yourself off the island. Resolve the, develop the habits of high performance. Now we're going to go into the next chapter. You know, just speed it up a little bit. Stay focused. Go away. Go after your dreams and keep moving towards your goal. Take charge of your life. Hold yourself responsible for a higher standard than anybody else except um, except accepts exceptions of you. Never excuse yourself, my bad. You are responsible. So pretty much um, in this chapter, he's going to explain how you know you are responsible for the things that you do that cause you to either fail or succeed. The big difference, escape dependency, um, pretty much that means that most people who don't succeed with goals that they set for themselves, they have an issue with dependency. They're always depending on somebody else to get something done for them. Time slips by, the root of unhappiness, negative emotion. I was about to say negative energy. Um, Negative emotion. Never, never, never be one of those people that look at the glass half empty. You always have to look at the glass half full. If you look at the glass half empty, you're never, 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 never going to reach the goal that you want to reach. The biggest problem, blame. When you start blaming people for why you didn't do this or why you didn't do that, you're never going to get anywhere either. The root cause of negative negativity is mostly pretty much what he's trying to say is usually when you don't take responsibility for your actions and you just blame other people. Stop blaming others. You have to start saying, I am responsible. The words, I am responsible, put you back in the driver's seat. 
Success versus failure. Trigger your success mechanism. And then it says, you were responsible. The rule uh, for happiness is to never upset or, ang or angry about anything that you cannot change. Yeah, that's another thing, too. Most people who are very negative about certain things that don't work out in their lives, they always um, are angry or upset about something that they no longer can change. It's out of their hands. It is what it is. It's like one of those situations that you already know what's about to happen, but yet you're still complaining. Think about why. You know, you have to think about why you're responsible for whatever's going on in your life. Keep emotional control. And ultimately, you have to make a decision with what you're going to do. Being best is a false goal. You have to measure success on your own terms. And it says, dare to go forward. Nothing splendid has ever been achieved except by those who dare believe that something inside of them was superior to circumstance. Action orientation. This is the inner motivation to get going immediately on a goal or project. Self-confident cancels fear. And pretty much if you have confidence in yourself, whatever fear you have of failing is completely going to go out the window because you actually have confidence in yourself to actually get that goal done. Everyone is afraid. Fear of rejection. This usually comes from destructive criticism in your early childhood and pretty much what that means is that means when you were growing up people gave you negative criticism that you know brought your self-esteem down instead of help you build up over time and for some people they think they're helping you but in all actuality they're really not a valuable success principle never do or don't do anything because you are afraid of what people may think about you because the fact is no one is thinking about you at all which is true when you do something don't ever do anything because you want to satisfy somebody else or because you think it's the right thing to do do it because you want to do it you know what i mean don't do it because you know, you think that's what your parents want to hear. You know what I mean? Um, the interesting discovery is that as you move forward, the person or situation that you fear and take action in spite of your fear, your fear goes away and is replaced by courage. You know, pretty much, you know, f face the fear is pretty much, you know, moving forward and saying, this is my fear and I'm going to fight it. Watson replied that with these classic words, if you want to increase your success rate, double your failure rate, that's where you'll find success on the future side of failure. And for anybody who doesn't understand what that means, it's pretty much saying that if you are more inclined to accept failure and actually, you know, face failure and say, okay, this is how I failed, this is how I'm going to fix it. Learn to be unafraid, forget about rejection, make it a game, do what scares you. In a Harvard study, they found that leaders solemnly use the word failure. Most pe And pretty much what that's saying is most people who are successful never use the word failure. What they do is if they make a mistake and they mess up, for example, in their business, they use words like, oh, I made a mistake, or... I learned something, and this is how I learned not to do something. They never actually use the word failure, which is actually true. Learning experience. This is a valuable learning experience, or this is an expensive learning experience. This was, pain, this was a painful learning experience, but they never used the word failure. So those were some examples that he gave you so you could get an idea of what they meant when they said that, um, successful people never use the word failure. Four steps to success. Decide what you want to do. Take action immediately. Fail and learn quickly. Try again over and over until you succeed. 
No failure, only feedback. Only feedback from now on, whatever you want to do, go go for it. So pretty much you have to look at your failure as feedback instead of failure. If you look at your failure as a failure, you're never going to go anywhere. Pick up the pace. You know, become unstoppable. You may you are more inclined to get stuff done. Failure will never overtake me if my determination to succeed stays strong. Decide what you really want. Within you right now, the power to do things you never dreamed possible. This power becomes available to you as soon as you can change your beliefs. You have to be hungry. Ambition. Perhaps the most important quality of successful people is ambition. What is it that you want more than anything else? So those are questions that you have to ask yourself. What is one goal that is achieved? Um, it would make the difference possible difference in your life. You need a big goal. What is your B-H-A-G? Big, hairy, ambitious goal. Goals are clear and specific. One of the most, one of the worst mistakes a person can make, which is involuntary, fatal to success, is to think that they already have goals when they, re when they really have our wishes. Um, that's one of the things this book also mentioned. You have to know the difference between goals and wishes. You know, you can't, you know, say, "Oh, I wish to be rich," or you know, or I want to do this or I want to do that and it's more of a wish. Change your life, personal strategic planning, your values, what do you believe in, your vision, imagine you can wave magic wands, your mission, your purpose, your actions, setting your goals, decide exactly what you want, write it down, set a deadline, make a list, organize the list, create a checklist, take action, do something every day. Um, momentous, which means you will move forward faster and easier. As a result, you find it naturally to get going and keep going every day by doing something on your goal every day you begin to develop the 10 top goal methods the key question create your own miracle you can you, i mean you start to make pro progress on all other goals spontaneously this is your greatest single responsibility to yourself and your future our goals can only be reached through a vehicle of plan in which we have much firmly believe until which we must vigorously act. There is no other route to success. Overcome procrastination. He who every morning plans the transition of the day and follows out that plan carries a thread that will guide him through the labyrinth of most busy life. Take um, task completion. From getting started on a job and completing it as soon as possible. Learned behavior. So pretty much what they're talking about is be one of those people that start a task and is actually willing to finish the task. Do not be one of those people that start a task and don't want to finish it. Everyone procrastinates. What holds you back? Lack of clarity. Lack of ambition. Lack of priorities, overload, lack of preparation, lack of energy, lack of knowledge, lack of self-discipline. Becoming action-oriented. Make a checklist. Salami slice the task. Swiss cheese te uh, technique. Use the 20-80 rule. 20% of the things you do for 80% of your results. So pretty much what that means is that you want to get... 20% of your most important things you have to get done and you have to see at least 80% result out of the things you've actually gotten done. You know, you have to 2080 it. Reward yourself.
Promise others. Begin immediately. Focus on each task. Single handing, handingly. One of the most powerful time management techniques ever developed. You feel like a winner. Speed and dependability. Future to be guaranteed. Your future will be guaranteed. Procrastination is attitudes, natural assassins. There's nothing so fatiguing as an uncompleted task. Become a lifelong learner. Live as if you were going to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were going to live forever. The best antidotes, knowledge and skill. The antidote to fear is skill. Self-made billionaires. Continuous learning. Pretty much what he's trying to say in that little section chapter is that usually people who become billionaires or even people who become millionaires, they are self-made. Pretty much that means that they always took the time to learn something new every day. If you're taking the time to learn something new every day, you are more inclined to become rich faster than anything rather than stay poor. No such thing as luck. Possibilities. or po uh, um, So pretty much um, what he was saying is that you do not become rich because of just luck. You actually planned it out, and that's how because that's how you became rich. Become a millionaire. Keep upgrading your knowledge and skills and gathering more information as if your future depended on it, because it does. Daily rituals. Most people who are successful, they get up super early and they start their day and they try to get everything done as soon as they can. Continuously improving your skills. Your job is to continually collect more dots, learn more things. Um, pretty much that dot theory is... Hold up, let me find it so it can make a little bit more sense. Yeah, right here. Um, Steve Jobs is famous for saying that you cannot be too attached to how you think your life is supposed to work out and instead trust that all the dots will be connected in the future. So that's pretty much what he was trying to say. You have to try to connect all your dots to get what you need done. Subscribe to summaries. Subscribe to you know, audio books or websites that explain how to build your success. Take additional courses, you know, take the time to actually learn what it took for these people to become successful. If you actually do that, maybe one day you might become successful. I re resolve to always go to bed at night smarter than when I woke up in the morning. And most successful people always go to bed as soon as they can. Get smarter every day. You always want to take the time to get as smart as you can as each day progresses. You never want to be stagnant and stay knowing the same information that you knew yesterday. Success is a consequence and must not be a goal. Never give up. There is no failure except in no longer trying. There is no defeat except from within no really insumerable barrier. Save our own interests, weakness of purpose persistence and self-discipline there is also a direct relationship between persistence and qualities of self esteem self-respect and personal pride develop persistence every failure of persistence and self-discipline weakens you in every other area as well they are all interlinked your subconscious subconscious mind is very powerful if you want to become a persistent person, you can program your mind in advance to never give up. So pretty much what that means is, I don't know, he gave an example after a while talking about how he told his kids to never give up and they grew up to kind of have that mindset, you know, never give up on something that you start. Pretty much what he's trying to say is always tell yourself never give up on something, always finish what you start. No matter how hard it gets. And eventually, when you do something, your mind will say to yourself, 
hey, why are you trying to give up right now? You got to finish this. You are in charge. Pretty much, you are in charge of yourself. Keep repeating. Becoming unstoppable. There are no limits. A creative man is motivated by the desire to achieve, not by the desire to be others. Which that is a very good quote. If you're a creative person, you want to achieve because you are a motivated person. Not because you want to show off to others to say that you're better than them or that you beat them. That's actually good to know. A great time to be alive. Don't go out and have a good day. Instead, go out and make it a good day. The Secrets of Success has always been the same. Get started and keep going. If you can do these things every single day, there are no limits on what you can achieve. Just do it. A winner is someone who recognizes his God-given talents, works his tail off to develop them into skills, and uses these skills to achieve his goals. And that's pretty much the end of this lovely book. Now, I tried to keep it as short and sweet and concise as I possibly could without, like, overdoing it and without giving too much of the book away, but pretty much giving you an idea of what this book is talking about. Pretty much, um, as you can see, these, this book is only really seven steps of explaining on how to be successful, but this, in the seven steps that he does give you to be successful, the, he really breaks down you know, what he means, and he uses, you know, successful people that were inspirational to a lot of people in America um, of how they became successful or famous quotes that they might have said that make a lot of sense when you read it. Um, I don't know if this book helped you. I really liked the book. I felt really inspired when I read the book. Um, I felt like I learned something new. Um as far as like maybe some things I need to change in my life or maybe things I could do better. Um, you know, I don't know how you felt about it. Comment down below, reach out to me on my social media. Let me know what you think of the book. Let me know if you want me to do more like kind of like book reviews, um, book explanations, whatever you want to call it. Um, I hope the bunny gang, uh, the bunny gang enjoyed this video. I'm bunny. Um, also don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.